But I want to ask you a question. Sis, do you even lift? I don't think we've ever heard that one before. I think it's generally bro, do you even lift? And I'm wondering why? Why don't we even include this option? It's probably because lifting is performance-based. That barbell sitting on the ground does not give two bits about whether you have a one-pack or a six-pack. It doesn't care. It just cares about whether you're going to lift it or not. It's as easy as that. But we typically are not judged on performance. I mean, on yeah, we're not judged on performance. We're judged on how we look. And this judgment comes by really instantly. I mean, so quick. And we can try to be as nice about it, as, you know, as inclusive about it as we want, but whether it's, wow, she's really, br she's really pretty, or, um, you know, he looks like and he, he can lift a lot of weight. You know, he looks big, he's probably athletic, or, you know, that guy looks kind of skinny, he's probably a smart guy. It can be positive, but we still make those assumptions. And because that judgment is so instant, we feel this pressure, and I think we feel it as women as well, to instantly, as quickly as possible, have our appearance as good as possible. So when you have searches, you're going to have, you know, the 30-day I'm going to lose 10 pounds, the week detox, the three-day reset, you know, because you felt like you did something wrong. Maybe you enjoyed the holidays a little too much or something like that. And we want instant gratification. We want this to work. We want those 10 pounds to come off because at the end, Shoot, I'm going to be happier, and I'm going to be confident, and now that's going to solve all of my problems because now I look better. But that's not how it works. Those instant results, even when they work, a lot of times die off. Women typically gain back their weight and more after these kinds of detoxes. And worst of all, in my opinion, is the mindset that you come in, into the gym, or a run, wherever. You step into that mindset of, I'm going to lose weight. And then you have a body check of, you know, you start running or you start lifting or whatever. You're maybe doing yoga and you think, you know, like these parts are jiggly. Like I'm not, I'm breathing a little too hard. Those people don't seem to be working so hard. They seem to have that in control. That girl looks better in her clothes. <laughs> these clothes aren't fitting me right. And you start having this mindset of, I shouldn't be here and I'm not good enough. And that low confidence maybe gets us through our workout out of insecurity. And it maybe forces us to keep doing it. And I will see women who will go to the gym regularly, but they're not happy. They're not happy with the way their body looks. They're not happy with the results. They're not happy with what they're doing because there's no point to it. There's no point to just looking good. And this cycle of just doing cardio, and then maybe eating, overeating. <clears throat> I've been through it. I was a dancer. I danced ballet. I don't think I look like a ballet dancer, quite. But I tried. I tried to do all the cardio. I tried to eat less. But I ended up eating a lot at night. I mean, to the point where I was feeling sick. I let that feeling die down a little, and then I ate some more. Because I felt like I deserved it. I was really good during the day. I did what was right, but I wasn't happy. There. And it's something like this. You feel like there's always that balance of, well, I, I should work out, I should do good things for my body, but also I want to enjoy life, right? I want to have that donut. I want to have something that's going to make my life a little more enjoyable. Enjoy the little things, right? Have that cheeseburger. It's not going to kill you, right? But I think labeling something as good and bad based on what you're going to look like, like I'm going to look better after working out or I'm going to look worse after eating something, that's not the right way to think about it. And my point is, is that why is weightlifting not part of our daily routine as women? Because we think this is what we're going to look like. These are both female bodybuilders to, you know, to keep it consistent. The one on the left uses steroids, and the one on the right doesn't. I agree, both of them are more muscular than your average woman. But I would think that the one on the right is a little more realistic. And that's probably because we just aren't capable of getting bulky and seeming manly. 
because we just don't have, unless you're pointing the 0.01% that has a higher testosterone level, we can't build that muscle unless we use steroids as well. So all you're going to look like is more fit, and that's part of the appearance. But I was still stuck in this little cycle here, trying to appear like I'm in control, but losing it. And I lifted the little cute little dumbbells on the left for a long time, high reps, low weight, because I wanted those long, lean muscles that you need to be a dancer and to look like a dancer. But one Sunday night, went in 5 p.m., nobody there, except one guy also stretching, and I saw that he was carrying these huge dumbbells. And I started talking to him because I always heard that maybe I should start weightlifting, but I wasn't really sure what to do. Nobody told me what to do. My mom certainly didn't know. So I went through my first bye day. And this is not a celebration of sexual orientation. This is just like a specific muscle training day. I was just focusing on biceps the whole time. Let me tell you, I hated it. <laughs> I really did. Because I felt so weak at the end, I couldn't even lift my arms. I didn't even realize that um, I couldn't even do that. And I walked around the rest of the week, something like this, because I couldn't extend my arms. Walked around like T-Rex. But <laughs> at the end of the week, once another week had passed, and it was time for buy day again, I didn't look any different. I mean, changes don't happen that quickly. But I realized that I could fit in a few more reps. I went up five more pounds. And that was progress to me. And I realized that these tiny steps would get me to wherever I wanted. It wasn't about appearance anymore. It was about performing. It was about finding some sort of challenge that I wanted to do and looking up to women like this, like Annie Thor's daughter up in the top right, CrossFit champion for three years. And if you've ever done CrossFit, this thing kills because you go 110% of what you can possibly do Sometimes during competitions, you'll pick up weights that you've never picked up before. It's always a challenge. But she smiles all the way through it. Katie Cananzaro, she was the first woman to ever complete the American Ninja Warrior. And I'm sure that she looked good, but I'm sure that people also took very good note of the extreme balance and coordination and strength that it took to complete that. And then on the bottom right, we have Holly Mangold, leader and top champion in Olympic lifting. 323 pounds, you might think. She's not healthy, but she is. She's strong, and she's the best competitor out there. So I want you to take a look at these bodies. All of these women don't care what they look like. They care about what they're best at what they're performers at. And we don't have to be athletes to find out who our best body is, what our top goal is, because we can push ourselves as much as we want. We're not emulating to try to be like men, to be strong or trying to be one way or another or try to be more muscular. We're just trying to find a niche. Because there are gymnasts, there are adventure racers who run for 16 hours, which is ridiculous, shot putters, gymnastics, pole vault, swimming, hammer throw, basketball, bodybuilding, all of this, all of these women feel accomplished at the end of the day. They have a goal in mind. And I know that these women don't train on their own. And that's something that I learned as well through my uh, experience with weightlifting. It's very difficult to push yourself to your limits on your own all the time. So I want to create a women's health support group that's going to bring the women of Vanderbilt together to appreciate ourselves, our strengths and our weaknesses. Lay it out there. Yeah, I'm a really bad runner, but I want to run faster. I know, I know that out there, out here maybe, there's a girl who can teach me. And that's what I want here. I want ourselves to celebrate our differences and to focus on our strengths, 
to see how far we can take ourselves. And when I ask you, do you even lift? If you say no, no big deal. Just come meet me and I'll show you around. Thanks.